Welcome back everyone to Cadia Stands. I know it's been a while, but we've got a great video for you guys today. We're building a ruined Hive City board for Warhammer 40,000 out of materials that you can get very easily from a hardware store, very inexpensively, and some MDF train that you can get online for a very low price. First, we're gonna take a trip to Home Depot. We're gonna get a four foot by four foot project board, about one quarter inch thick plywood. And then we're gonna get some bracers to go around the sides. These in particular were about one and a half inches wide and three quarters of an inch tall. So you're gonna cut those up as shown here. There's no exact science, but you really just wanna make sure you've got adequate support for your board without making the entire thing too, too heavy. So we're gonna secure those in uh, with some pretty standard wood screws going all around here, making sure everything will be seated correctly because this is your stable base for your board later in the process. At most hardware stores, you can actually even get the braces that go around the outside cut to size. So that takes another element out of the process. Now I'm going to be cutting some cork bed for the roadways. That's about 3 16 of an inch tall. So we're going to secure that with a caulking gun. The brand on that is Liquid Nails for the adhesive. So we're going to weigh those down with some weights while they cure. Next, we're going to use one quarter inch foam board for the areas below the buildings, cut those to size, and then just affix them with the same caulking gun and liquid nails we used earlier. Here it is, all completed with that step. You can see the boards look a little rough, but after all, it is a ruined city, so that's going to be right in character at the end. So here's the kits that we're gonna be using. Um, broken domicilium from Tabletop Scenics. I bought two packs of these for about, uh, I think, I want to say 20 euros each from their website. Very inexpensive. They do take a little bit to put together, but really nothing even compared to uh, plastic kits. So here you can see me assembling them. Uh, it's a very basic process, just using some wood glue, punching the pieces out uh, and putting them together. I didn't find I really had to use any super glue or anything. All the parts fit together perfectly. And wow, these are really just great inexpensive kits that allow you to make a ton of terrain for not a ton of money. So after testing the layout of the houses, you can see I've come up with a design plan here, um, kind of trying to give the impression that there's some larger buildings that have been broken into pieces here. You can see we've got a Lehman Ross with sponsons uh, through that gap in the destruction, as you wanna make sure that this board will be playable in the end. So you wanna make sure your vehicles can fit through all those gaps. I've also put a uh, square piece of that foam board out in the center of the town square there because we're gonna be putting a statue on top of that as a centerpiece for the board in just a little while. Make sure to take some time with this city planning step as this is gonna be one of the most important as this will determine how your board is going to play later and you wanna make sure that everything is balanced and everything looks right before you glue these buildings down. Now, speaking of that statue, we're gonna start priming it here with just some Rust-Oleum flat gray primer. These models are made out of resin. I got them from cromlech.eu, they're great kits, um, but just make sure to clean them off very thoroughly as they are resin kits before you paint to just make sure that that sticks well. So just going over it with some gray here, um, and then we're going to bust out some Rune Lord Brass Primer from Games Workshop. And we're going to use that to prime the actual statue figurine itself. Uh, make sure to shake up these cans quite a bit before you spray them, as especially the Rune Lord Brass does have a tendency to not get the best coverage if you don't do that properly. So now moving back to the board, we're going to use some sculpt -a mold to kind of enhance those ruins and build some more rubble. So just mix that up, um, one part sculpt mold, I believe, to one part water. And now we're just gonna start applying that all over the board, just kind of drawing out uh, a continuation of those ruins um, and where you'd expect most of the rubble to fall in the zones that have been completely destroyed. So you can wear some gloves, you don't have to, but it is a pretty messy process. So make sure to do this outside. The good thing about sculpt mold is that it does take quite a long time to cure. So you do have a lot of time to play around with things if you don't like how it looks immediately. So here you can see the whole board after that process, things look a little messy, but once we get a just a flat black undercoat on the whole board, everything's gonna look 
a whole lot more tied together. Now moving back to the statue, I've given that a shade of Agrax Earthshade off camera. And now we're going to be putting on some Citadel Technical Paint uh, Nikolak Oxide. So that's going to simulate a oxidized copper effect. So I brush this pretty liberally all over the model as obviously the city is going to be very old and ruined. But I would say make sure your brush strokes are mostly going downwards as this is how the weathering is going to occur on copper statues that you see in the real world. So put this all over the model pretty liberally. Um, I know in a lot of the Citadel actual instructions, they say just put it in the recesses. But obviously in this case, the statue has been standing out for probably thousands of years at this point. So here's the finished statue. Looks a lot better than that gleaming primer we had on it earlier. Looks very nice, very weathered. And we've done some weathering on the base as well. Now we're going to mix up some plaster of Paris um, to the consistency of kind of about milk. Let that sit for a day, break it up with the back of a screwdriver. Uh, and then we're going to be starting to apply that with PVA glue all over as more rubble. No science to this again. Just place it where you think that most of the debris will have fallen. So I find that that's going to be where uh, the walls would continue off of the ruins I've already put on. And then obviously putting some in the middle as well. And that's going to help break up those flat, bland areas. I will say apply this glue very liberally. You should have actual gallons of it standing by as I did. I mean, you can just buy this as Elmer's glue at Walmart for pennies on the dollar. Uh, but just make sure everything is fixed down very nicely before you start painting. So go ahead and repeat this process all over the board. You see I've got some rubble spilling out into the streets here. I've got some around the statue area in the center. There is really no wrong way to do this again. Though make sure to be constantly testing this with figures to make sure they're going to actually be able to stand up when it comes time to play the actual game. Next, just take some watered down PVA glue. I think mine was about three parts water to one part PVA. And just spray that all over the model to help seal things down. Now we're going to start the painting process. So grab your flat black spray and just go at it. Um, start covering the entire surface of the board very liberally because you really want to have that black in the recesses as you build up color up to lighter colors like lighter grays later on in the process. I think I went through three entire spray cans in this process alone. So now we're going to start building up the colors um, and creating some highlights with some slate color and some medium gray. So I started with a slate, just going around, spraying from the top down to kind of create like a Zenithal highlight um, and just go over really the entire board, especially on the sides of the buildings and the larger panels where you're going to see light hitting it um, and, and build that up. So I finished up with the slate. I added some light gray and you can see it really creates a great highlight effect that brings out the top points while creating some really nice shadows in the recesses all over the board. Very inexpensive process, only have really two highlighting colors and didn't really go through that much paint at all. And with that, the board is just about complete. We've successfully made it for a very low amount of money. The train in total probably cost about $50 with shipping. Uh, and then the statue cost, I'd say probably about $25 between the statue and the pedestal. And all the rest of the components, including the spray paint, can be easily obtained at your local hardware store. So here you can see just how easy it is to place vehicles as we already made those good measurements to make sure that vehicles can fit through all the gaps and this board is as playable as possible. For that same reason, we didn't put a whole lot of rubble on the roads to make sure those are easily navigable by bigger, maybe Imperial Knights or other large models in the game. So thank you all for watching. This was a great project. I got a lot of fun with it. And I will say check out Broadsword Wargaming's video on the same topic. I lifted a lot of their techniques for building a city board from them. Thank you all for having so much patience with the channel. I've been busy for the last two months, but I hope you guys will enjoy this new video. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, Cadia Stands.